Warning, this experiment uses volatile liquids heated above the flash point. Improper ventilation will result in explosive gas composition which are easily ignited. Some of the solvents mentioned are known carcinogens. Hi YouTube, today we'll be making sulfur crystals from garden grade sulfur. The sulfur is however quite contaminated and we first need to filter off the impurities. Now sulfur is insoluble in polar solvents like water but is to some extent soluble in non-polar organic solvents like aromatics or cyclokines. It dissolves really well in carbon disulfide, but this is not easily obtainable for the home chemist. But many paint thinners contain aromatics and can be purchased at your local hardware store. Just look at the back and see that it contains either silene or trimethyl benzene. Benzene and toluene can also be used but have lower boiling points, which is to a slight disadvantage for this method. The solubility of most aromatics at room temperature is only a few grams per liter. However, at the elevated temperature, the solubility can increase to more than 100 grams per liter, depending on temperature and your solvent of choice. Whichever you choose, try to stay well below the boiling point of the solvent and to avoid unnecessary evaporation. For my experiment, I chose 1 2 4 trimethyl benzene, which has a boiling point of 169 degrees centigrade. 300 milliliters were then added to a beak along with 10 grams of the sulfur mix, which in this case was labeled 8% sulfur. You may notice the solvent had a green tint which is a result of previous sulfur filtration. The 10 grams used here will have low saturation because I wanted to see if it would reduce losses when filtering, but 20 grams of 80% sulfur to the same volume show similar result to 10 grams and both have yields close to 90%. The solubility here are estimates based on experiments and solubility tables other than that STP proved the difficult to find. The temperature was then set to 150 degrees centigrade. Remember that toluene and silane has lower boiling points and you should see which boiling point applies to your solvent. The mixture was constantly stirred and checked with the thermometer since the thermocouple reference to plate temperature are not the solution. Now we take a simple coffee filter and fold it over another beaker to which a small amount of a solvent is added. This is then placed next to the other beaker on the hot plate. This is so that both beakers and the filter are of similar temperature and sulfur won't immediately crystallize out during filtration. When the temperature of the solution reached 140 degrees the solution was poured over the filter and removed from the plate. The filter beaker was left on the plate until the filtrate had dried up. It was then removed from the hot plate and as it cooled, sulfur will start to crystallize out of the solution and we soon have a nice bed of clean sulfur crystals. The crystals will stick quite well to the bottom so the easiest thing is to decant the solvent to a bottle for later sulfur extraction or distillation to purify the solvent. The crystals were scooped out on a paper plate and left to dry in the fume hood. The result was 7.2 grams of fluffy yellow crystals. And that's it. If you want bigger crystals you will need to repeat this procedure several times. Use a seed crystal to act as nucleation site and don't use as high saturation as here, as too rapid growth will lead to defects in the structure. I only did this once because I have no need for large crystals, but repeat until the side size is reached. I hope you enjoyed, please rate, comment and subscribe.